Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey everybody, and welcome to my quick review of Fantasy Star 4. So I recently played through this game for the first time, and it was my first Fantasy Star game that I'd played. I kind of was expecting to not like it, because I thought, you know, Nintendo has all the good RPGs at this time, and uh, I was really, you know, blown away by how good I thought this game actually was. Part of what makes this game so good is that all of the parts work together so well. For example, the graphics, design, sound, and gameplay all work together to flesh out the story and the characters. Let's start with the story. This sci-fi aesthetic is actually done really well and it's refreshing. It really makes all of the cliches seem more interesting and fresh and new and exciting. One thing that I really like about this game's story is that all of the things that exist in this game are explained and make sense. There's a reason why things happen. Another thing that I really love about how this story is told ties really closely in with design, and that's how it uses these almost manga-esque panels to tell the story in certain parts, and I think it's a really nice touch. I love being able to explore more than one planet, and the sound and feel and look of each planet is d demonstrably different. Even each town on Matavia feels different. Then we come to characters, and overall I enjoy these characters a lot. In this discussion of each of these characters, I'm going to be bringing in some design and gameplay elements as well, because of, as I said how before, how well they all work together. When it comes to the character's design, these designs exist in a couple different places. There's their map design of the sprites, there's the portrait look, you know, the little thing that shows up when they speak, or their manga design, which are usually the same idea and then there's their battle design. All of them are slightly different, but it's only a problem with some of them. Most of them are actually pretty great across the board. But when it comes to the map sprites, I like that the characters have realistic proportions as opposed to the big head that we see in most of the Final Fantasy games. But in this one, I don't know, there's something about it that makes them look a little silly in their map sprites. I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it's just my expectations. So when you see these scores underneath here with the character name, that's the sco scores for the character, not necessarily the design, but I'm going to be giving some design notes with that too. Okay, Chaz, this is a dumb name for a hero, <laughs> but at least he's not a silent protagonist. He's mostly a typical plucky hero, but I like that he gets upset when he's teased, and I like how he's able to show some emotion throughout the game, like he cries, at points, and it is really effective, I think. When it comes to his design, it's a little bland, though. Even as, you know, male protagonists in JRPGs go, this is a little bland of a design for this character. Moving on to Alice. I love her tough but fair and caring personality. I also kind of love how she keeps on uh, getting more money out of Han. It's also a nice gameplay connection with her character that she starts off super powerful compared to everybody else, but then Chaz catches up to her and that eventually surpasses her. But her design is honestly also kind of bland. Han is so normy, but I kind of like that for his personality and how it fits into this story. He puts up with Alice's demands because he has to. And his design is also kind of bland, but it's like appropriately bland. He's not some hero, he's a scientist. Rune is completely overpowered for most of the game, but I love that. He's a jerk at some points, especially to Chaz, and that's later explained, but I don't know how satisfying that explanation actually is. But his relationship with Chaz is kind of great by the end. When it comes to his design, I love that he kind of sticks out in being the most interesting looking character that you meet at first. Grizz is boring in battle and out. I don't hate him, but I was not sad to see him leave the party. I feel like his design could have been tweaked just a little bit so that he didn't look so silly. <laughs> like, it's almost there, but not quite. Rika is kind of the MVP for most of the game, honestly. She's a great healer and she has a surprisingly strong attack for most of the game. I like how she's really clueless about some things, but completely knowledgeable in other things. And it makes sense, but I wish she had a little bit more character growth and development throughout the game. I still really like her though. I really like Rika's design. 
other than the fact that she's wearing a one-piece bathing suit, a cape, and thigh-high boots. Not much to say about Demi. She's fine. I think her design works, though. She's a cute little android. I think it works. Ren is kind of a bland character, though. He's useful in battle sometimes, but then very much not so in others. But other than how tall he is, Ren is basically just like a really normal guy with some extra stuff around his face. Like, there's nothing that's that interesting about his overall look, I think. Rasha is also kind of overpowered, and he can even recharge the party's TP. Like, come on, that that's game-breaking. <laughs> I do wish the translation were slightly better for his dad jokes. Like, I want to groan a little bit more. As they stand now, I kind of don't understand his jokes. His design is not bad, but I feel like, you know, the holy man robes are a little on the nose and they feel very Catholic churchy to me. I kind of wish Kyra had stuck around for a little longer. I feel like she could have been interesting if we could have seen her developed a little farther. Um, she and Chaz have a really fun dynamic together. When it comes to her design, I like that Kyra looks really similar to Rune, but sometimes in battle they look too similar. And it's like, wait, who did that? I don't remember what command I gave them. All right, now moving on to villains. It was me, Zio. Zio is a threat until he's not. When it comes to his design, whoa, pauldrons. <laughs> but he's got a very normal looking guy face. Like, you know, George from accounting in imposing black armor. It's kind of handsome though. So is George from accounting. Dark Force. I don't mind that there's a villain that's just like unthinking malice. And I really like the designs, but I do kind of miss being able to sort of gleefully root for, but also really hate a villain that I feel like a lot of Final Fantasy villains nail really well. Le Chic? Is that how we say his name? Uh, anyway, um, he's not around for long, but he makes a really lasting impression. He's also a more difficult battle than the final boss, I think. His portrait and manga design look really cool, but then his map design and his battle design are just meh. When it comes to NPCs, there are surprisingly few that stick out at all. There's the principal. Um, I like that you're not sure whether or not he's a villain, and his design is appropriately slimy. And then we've got, you know, like, Grandfather Doran, Professor Holt, that one Esper that we don't learn his name. Other than that, there really aren't too many NPCs that do anything or have any lasting impression on the game. But in some ways I kind of feel like that makes the main party of heroes feel even more important. With the villains and the NPCs not getting as much screen time, a lot of that time is spent on developing the main cast. So it's a little bit of a trade-off, but I think in this case, I don't mind it. When it comes to diversity among this cast, there are a lot of non-human characters, so I guess that's diversity, but basically all of the human characters have the same skin tone, so we're not there yet. <laughs> I think this game handles a gender balance pretty well though, although they are all binary characters, like even the androids are binary, and like, come on, this isn't... I mean, I know it's 1993, but you could explore with that a little bit. There are fewer female characters than male characters, but they're all at least pretty well fleshed out characters. This playable cast in general feels pretty real. Some of them are kind of boring, but how boring they are makes sense in, in a way that makes them feel even more real. Some people in real life are more boring than others, like me. And the dialogue is mostly pretty good in this game. Next up, graphics. I don't have a ton to say about graphics. I think the enemy and character attack animations look pretty good. But then the map animations do kind of feel like a letdown from the cool battle animations and the non-animated manga scenes. But I still think, overall, the graphics are pretty great in this game. Now moving on to design. A couple things to sort of tie design and graphics in together, though, like the title screen is totally rad. I love it. And, you know, the character portraits in general are really nice. I've already talked about all of the manga scenes and how they really help tell the story, sometimes even completely without text. The towns in the game all look, feel, and even sound nicely varied. 
The dungeons are all at least fine. Some are a little annoying, but most are really not that bad. When it comes to the monster designs, there might be a little bit too much palette swapping going on, but, you know, in general, they're good designs. Especially the bosses. The bosses look great. From the second the game starts, I was really digging the music of the title screen. Not all of the music is that good, but most of it, you know, I think this game has a really good score. The sound effects are all really good, too. The score is really intricate, and a lot of it is intense, but in a good way. And I think being a sci-fi game really opens up the score to use all of these computery bleeps and bloops in the, in the score and make it really feel like it fits. Moving on to gameplay. So a little thing that seems insignificant but actually feels really nice, I like the really fast walking speed in this game. You kind of like zip through most of the places you go to. When it comes to the battles, the it feels like it's just the right number of random battles. And also the battles are really fast. Part of what keeps them fast is the macro planning, and I, I think that's a great touch and more games should do things like that. The battles you get into when you're in the vehicles are interesting, but they're ultimately pretty pointless. But all in all, this game is pretty easy, which I love. <laughs> With all of those thoughts put together, I give this game a score of a 90% or an A-. minus. So here's where that stacks up with other games we've scored so far. Although I think we might need to uh, re-examine some of these older scores. But as I've talked about in a previous video, the difference between just me scoring a game and me scoring a game with Ramin or with Erica changes the scores a lot. So something to keep in mind as you look at all of our scores. But also... All of this is just our opinion and nothing really matters. I would like to say in closing, if you have not played this game and you're a JRPG fan, you need to find some way to play it. I played this on the Switch um, and it's really easy to access there, runs great. If you're not already a JRPG fan, this might not be the best intro, but I don't know, maybe it is. Maybe this is a really good intro to the genre if you want to try it out. That's all, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a like. If you like the content that we put out, please follow us so you can see it right when it's released. If you have any of your own opinions, I would love to read them. Please go ahead and post them in the comments below. And yeah, maintain your groovy selves. See you next time.